Welcome back. And we're here with Maureen, the park ranger yeah. from Theodore Roosevelt National Park here in Medora. Welcome. Thank you. And if you're not too familiar kind of with the geography, so we're, we're in Medora proper. We're downtown. From here, I can see the Theodore Roosevelt yes. National Park sign. And then that's the park, which is just just incredible. So we were kind of talking about this during the break. Maureen, you must have just the dream life. Tell us about how cool it is to work at Theodore Roosevelt National Park. It, it is a dream to work at Theodore Roosevelt National Park. I am particularly excited about presidential parks. And here you have a site which actually was the reason why a person became president. And what's your favorite thing about working here? I love the ethic that started here, the Theodore Roosevelt conservation ethic. You won't find it anywhere else in the world. This is unique. That's amazing. Awesome. So if somebody is planning a trip to Medora, um, what would you like them to know in terms of if you're going to come to the park, whether it's for a day, whether you want to stay for a few days, what should we do in terms of planning to make sure we get to cover all of our bases at the park? Oh, covering all the bases, you need a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Because you've got to spend a lot of time in Medora, and then when you're in the park, there is the south unit, which is right next to Medora. There's the north unit up near uh, Watford City. And right in the middle, Elkhorn Ranch, which is where Roosevelt had his original ranch. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So you talked about camping and lodging. So what is the procedures and uh, protocols that people need to take when they're camping and lodging here at Theodore Roosevelt National Park? So there's two places that you can camp in the park that are formal campgrounds. The south unit has the Cottonwood Campground. The north unit has the Juniper Campground. You can reserve half of those sites. The other half are first come, first serve. So wow. if you decide, hey, I want to go, there still be places available. And for those who are a little more adventurous, there's backcountry camping. Ooh. So you can plan, you can get a permit, and you can go out and camp all on your own in the backcountry. You get a van a van and you come here. Yes, <laughs> shout out to van a vans and photos. So, Maureen, in the National Park, for people that haven't been here, and I know there's a lot of people who love to tour National Parks, oh, yeah. can you just kind of give us a little bit of a background? How was the National Park started? How big is the park? What can we find there? So the park was started in 1947, actually as Theodore Roosevelt National Memorial, because it wow. was all about Roosevelt. In 1987, it was redesignated as a national park site. And for the National Park Service, there are sites all over the country, but only a handful of them, about 60 of them, are national parks. So this is a park designation. And when you're here in the national park, there's so much to do beyond camping. You can horseback ride, bring your horses in. You could spend the day just driving the roads if you wanted to just look around and look for bison or antelope or bighorn sheep. So there is wow. so much to do. If you want to just spend a couple of hours, you could do that. If you want to spend a couple of weeks, you can do that too. And what are the safety protocols that we should adhere to when we are camping in the backwoods? For instance, we, we saw a really cool kind of map of a bison where you pet it and it was like no 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 go home yes so tell us about that maybe avoid some of the wildlife yes. right you, you definitely do not want to pet the bison <laughs> you want to give all of the wildlife plenty of room bison might look like a big calm cow but they can move very very quickly so you want to give them room and that's true for all the wildlife this is their home yes you want to give them space in their home and you can enjoy them what are the uh forest preservation um, things that are happening around because there's a lot of forestry out here and although that the preservation is key because Medora is a hidden treasure mm -hmm. in the United States. And you did mention conservation as well so tell us about that. So approximately 29,000 acres of the total 70,000 acres are designated Theodore Roosevelt Wilderness and a wilderness designation is very special it means you don't take motorized vehicles in there you can backpack in there, you can hike, you can take your horses, but it is preserved to maintain as pristine an environment as possible. So it's exciting that this park has such a big wilderness designation. And the North Unit, the vast majority of that is considered wilderness. Mm. And so that's part of the Roosevelt conservation ethic. Yes. He came to the Medora area. Uh, the idea was to do a little bit of hunting and then he came back for healing and that set the seed for preservation and presidency. I think Amazing. What you said perfectly describes Amazing. our trip because we've gotten a whole lot of healing on this trip. Yes. Well, more to come here on North Dakota today and lots more to see, hear, and taste. <laughs> we'll be right back.